let's get a Seattle legend in here. Let's take a look at our final clip of the episode. Man upstairs, Isaiah, if you could play Sap Time. Into the beats. That's right. Channel 81 on your FM dial. And I want you just to take your head and turn the volume real, real loud. I don't want to have to beat you up. One, two, three. One yet, no opponents to fight. It's my home track. Seattle is my hometown. But Japan Superstar is also fat. <laughs> A rap, baby. <laughs> I think I think that might be the the best <laughs> best one we've ever played. I love that. I oh my almost, god, do I love it. Almost as entertaining as his um New Japan run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now if you're unfamiliar with Bob Sapp, uh he he was a, a football. He played for the Washington Huskies, and then had one game in three years of the NFL. Then he went to the WCW Power Plant, but it got closed by Vince. And then he had this incredible run in Japan, where there how how, how well so well well you know he so WCW closes, and he you know like a, he was an out of work wrestler, so he's like I'll go to Japan and wrestle, and he wasn't a very good wrestler, so he started doing uh, MMA. And he, as an MMA draw, is was like a, a, a he was a superstar in Japan, unlike anyone in America. Like bigger than Hulk Hogan, bigger than The Rock. At least The Rock when he was a wrestler, uh, he was on every show. He was like just this in demand celebrity. His fight with Aki Bono did fifty four million viewers in two thousand three. This man was unreal. Uh, I don't know when sap time is from. I think it's from, is it from 2004, 2003, something like that? Yeah, I think 2003. Um, it's just amazing to me. He wasn't a very good wrestler. He was a terrible MMA fighter, but he, he has like the most charisma of anyone ever. I mean, when you talk about the second coming of Hulk Hogan, Bob Sapp is it. How Vince McMahon didn't just give him fifty million dollars to move into the McMahon mansion in Stamford? I don't know. I mean, I don't he know. tried, right? He, no, he... well, no, he. Well, here's this. I looked this up. Taboo Tuesday, two thousand six. Johnny Ace and Vince McMahon met with Bob Sapp, and they offered him one million dollars a year. Are you fucking kidding me? For Bob Sapp? One million dollars. I mean, Bob Sapp was making, you know, twenty five thousand dollars in appearance in Japan. You know, this guy was making so much money that he turned them down because the money wasn't good. And, you know, they thought they were going to get him like there were plans in place for him to win the elimination chamber at December to dismember, which think about that. What like, you know, how Bob Sapp fits into like 2007 WWE, like is it Bob Sapp and Donald Trump against Vince McMahon and, and Umaga? I think so. Well, I think is, that's is that ECW? Just a, well, the December to December Elimination Chamber was an ECW show, right? It yeah. was, yeah. But that's Bobby Lashley won that match, mm -hmm. um, and that was the talk at the time. Was like, we want Bob Sapp. We need this big guy. You know, we lost Lesnar. You know, Vince in business was bad then. Remember that was like the DX, the DX reunion era, like. Wrestling was really bad. And Bob Sapp you know, was a IWGP heavyweight champion too. And like the sure. middle of Enochiism. Right. 2004. No, he was the biggest star in Japan by leaps and bounds. He won it observer best box office draw, I think like two or three years in a row, maybe just one year, but he was definitely in the conversation, you know, 2002 to maybe 2007. Uh, it's just amazing that Vince didn't get him to me like 
Is there another human being in wrestling more tailored to what Vince McMahon wants out of wrestling? He's a giant. He's totally down for fucking whatever. <laughs> like, he loves to have fun. Yeah. Just like he's a real fighter. I don't know. It just seems to me like kind of like the, one of the great lost uh, what ifs in wrestling. They lowballed him. Can you believe it? Oh, a million dollars. I mean, I guess that. Can you believe that Vince McMahon doesn't value his talent? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, let's talk about this this song and this video. This video, uh, it's Soul Train reminiscent. He's got four backup dancers, five backup singers who are like, I don't, I want to know more about them. Uh, the, there's a lot of dancing. There's uh, colorful suits. Uh, some His flow up. is straight up from 1986. Mm-hmm. The the editing is like uh, reminiscent of the Cosby show intro. There's like lots of shots of him <laughs> hopping into frame and like rolling his eyes. <laughs> uh, yeah. And that his voice is just j- very jarring, obviously. I, yeah, I hope he, I hope I, I saw a behind the scenes video of this and he just seemed like the most professional, like happy guy uh, supposedly this I didn't they didn't mention this in the the, the video but uh, this was bankrolled by the the mob. I would kill to have to be featured in a music video like that. You know, custom made suit, dancers, my name and and lights. Oh my gosh, it's <laughs> yeah. The wrestling club with Darren and Brett. We've got a show that you'll never forget. Never forget.